the queen of chess, a child prodigy, losing to Judith Polgar is no disgrace. This is the story of Judith Polgar, the remarkable chess player who unlocked her genius with a mindset and study strategy. At just 15 and 4 months old, she became a grandmaster, stunning the chess world with her prowess and defeating adult men with ease. Her opponents often made excuses, such as, I had a headache or I had a stomachache after losing to her. She's a force to be reckoned with in the women's game. And she took first place in the Women's World Chess Championship, the Women's Chess Olympiad and the European Women's Chess. She only played three women's tournaments before deciding to only play against men. The women's game wasn't challenging enough for her. As she once said, I might never have become a chess grandmaster if I stuck to the women's only tournament. As a grandmaster, Bobby Fischer stayed at the Polgar home. He defected from the US and was on the run. While at the Polgars, he perfected Fischer Random with Judith Polgar and her sisters. He played and analyzed 960 games with Judith Polgar, passionately showing her how he thinks about high level chess. So Judith used this to adapt and adjust her approach to the game. Fischer wanted to stay longer, but he was forced to move on. And it was the last time they ever met. However, Judith Polgar flourished from this help and he came at the right time in her life. Judith's domination continued against male opponents, earning her praise from notable figures in the chess world. She's the only woman to ever reach the top 10 in the rankings with an ELO of 2735. Vasily Smyslov described her as Tal in a skirt, referencing Mika Tal, an aggressive chess player who made sacrifices to gain advantages. Judith even defeated chess legends like Kasparov, Anand and Karpov and reached the men's final in 2005. Despite her remarkable success, Judith found it difficult to defeat her sisters. In fact, their games ended in a draw 95% of the time. So the question remains, why couldn't she beat her own sisters? You could argue that there was psychological pressure or there was a secret weakness in a game, which is unlikely with regard to secret weakness. I grew up in a very special atmosphere which was intentionally set up by a father. Everything was about chess and I learned from my sisters. The Pogar sisters have been into chess since they were kids. And they learned and practiced together. And eventually Judith and Susan made it to Grandmaster. Judith smashed Bobby Fischer's record, being the youngest GM by two months. Now you might be thinking that all three sisters must be total geniuses with the same level of skills and natural talent. However, it's more likely that their training and passion for the game is what's really set them apart. Judith Polgar had a growth mindset even as a strong GM. If someone beat her, she'll be all over the analysis after the game, eager to learn. She was so passionate about it that players like Lev Schickers wanted to be a second. And let's not forget how humble she was even though she was seriously good. Bobby Fischer and Anand used to come all the way to Budapest just to play her and her sisters. As a junior chess player, she was superstitious. Nobody allowed her to touch the winning pencil or sweater. It must have worked because Judith Polgar became a great player. However, it's not just about having the right mindset and quirks. Judith had routines and habits that helped make her a great chess player. Laszlo Polgar believed he could turn any healthy child into a prodigy. And he had a simple strategy. He just needed a wife willing to jump on board. Laszlo met Clara in the USSR and they moved to Hungary and had Susan, Sophia and Judith. The experiments began in 1970 with a simple premise that any child has the innate capacity to become a genius in any chosen field as long as education starts before the third birthday and they began to specialize at six. Laszlo developed their training program. He coached Susan Polgar for six months and at the age of four, she walked into Budapest's Smokefield Chess Club which was crowded with elderly men and proceeded to beat the veteran players. Soon thereafter, she dominated the City Girls Under Age 11 tournament with a perfect score. Chess is a big deal in Hungary. It's very competitive. And this was clear proof that the Polgar sisters had potential. Laszlo took a huge gamble on this theory and his training method because there was a good chance of failure. However, the rigorous routine and the speed of improvement shocked him. So let me tell you how they did it. The girls spent hours every day solving studies, puzzles and tactical positions with Laszlo. When they weren't solving puzzles, Judith often played blindfolded chess at least 10 times a day. And they played blitz chess for the rest of the time. But technology didn't allow them to easily find strong players. So Laszlo had a problem. He needed to give his girls a challenge. What there was a lot of was local chess players. 
at the age of eight, the sisters would play blitz with the adults at Gayula Square near their apartment on a one for int basis. They made just enough from playing chess for candy and some snacks. Laszlo would also invite strong players into their home for blitz games. At the age of 10, Judith made it on the front page of the New York Times after finishing first in the New York Open among adult chess players. In 1988, Polga made a first international master norm at the international B section of the New York Open. In 1988, she won the under 12 boys section of the World Youth Chess in Romania. And she's the first girl in chess history to have won the boys junior world championship. And in October, she finished first in the 10 player round robin tournament in London, scoring 7-2 for a half point lead over Israeli GM Yair Kraidman. Both Bobby Fischer and Gary Kasparov were 14 when they were awarded the IM title. However, Polga was 12, so what was her playing strategy and how did she study? Polga credits her success to her play style. She focused on chess tricks in the middle game, and these tend to be two or three moves ahead. She also studied these books, but Polga developed the ability to pull out a trick from nowhere. The countless hours paid off, she trained herself to find nuances in her position, and she used this weapon in combination with strategy and basic chess knowledge. Judith Polga had all the right stuff to be a champion. At the Amsterdam 1989 tournament, Judith had a routine that would make any athlete jealous. Judith usually slept at around 10.30pm, ate at 10am, and played throughout the afternoon. Her preparation was between 1 and 2 hours, and she always stopped 1 hour before the game to relax. My preparation consisted of playing over my lines from a big bunch of handwritten notes, which is reasonable. The chess material I used to take with me to tournaments weighed about 10 kilos, and I always kept it as hand luggage. If I lost this, my career would be over. What made Judith Polga stand out was a secret weapon, knowledge. She researched her opponents like a detective and used what she learned to her advantage. This wasn't rocket science, but many other players didn't put in the same level of work. Instead, they relied on their gut instincts and memory. It's normal to wonder if we can create more amazing players using Laszlo Polgar's methods. And that's the question that Professor Julian Stanley asked. Oftentimes they're not nearly working up to their capacity. By not recognizing and nurturing this talent, we may be losing a lot of potential. We're losing a great deal of scientific uh, talent. He thought that the education system was bad at finding potential. He showed the benefits of academies and programs in his 45-year study, starting with Student Zero. Student Zero is Joseph Bates. He's a talented 12-year-old from Baltimore who was bored, so he enrolled in computer science at John Hopkins, where he excelled. At one point, he found himself teaching his classmates Fortran, and Student Zero showed that Stanley might be right. Does it foster an elitism? Well, the word uh, elite is used, of course, is more or less a smear word, but these youngsters already are talented in the situation in which they are. By putting them together, you don't you, you, you make them actually more humble and less arrogant. Which is a fair point with respect to elitism. Julian's study suggests that early cognitive ability has more effect on achievements than either deliberate practice or environmental factors such as socio-economic status. And this was the case for Judith Polgar. Judith went on to compete against other super grandmasters and became one herself. She was able to break the chess stereotype and transform the game. But it meant more than that, so Judith Polgar founded the Chess Foundations to improve problem-solving strategic thinking through chess for both boys and girls. 